I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey guys, Teacher James here. Hope you guys had an amazing week. And before we start our worship session, I just want to open us up in prayer. So let's put our hands together and pray. Lord, thank you so much for another Sunday where we're able to come together online and just be able to worship you together and listen to your word through Pastor Edgar today. And even though being online is pretty draining and we're all kind of sick of it, I pray that you continue to be with us and help us persevere during this time. And yeah, just thank you for protecting us throughout all this. It's been over a year now and just I'd like to thank you for just helping us not go crazy but keep on fighting the good fight and pray that we may be able to continue to do this as uh, vaccines are coming out and people are getting vaccine and cases are lowering again and so thank you that's all your work and thank you so much for um, for just giving us more hope and always having hope uh, giving and always giving uh, us someone to rely on and yeah, I pray that you would just be with Pastor Edgar as well today as he teaches your word and let him be your mouthpiece for today and just help us have a restful Sunday and enjoy this worship that we're about to do. And so I thank you so much again and uh, I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'll see you guys later. Enjoy your worship session. The worship worship session. See you guys. Bye. And hello, Primary and Junior fam, and welcome to another week of Sunday worship with Ben and John. And all seriousness, good to see you guys. And yeah, isn't it great? The weather's been really hot, but very nice. And we are slowly getting closer to reopening every week, which is. Exciting news because we all get to see each other again. Woo! And honestly, I for one can't wait to worship in person with you guys. It's just really different and really weird staring at the screen <laughs> during worship. So um, can't wait to gather, dance, and sing. So until that day comes, we will continue doing this virtually. Uh, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Let's uh, get our hearts ready, our voices ready, our bodies ready for a time of worship. Okay, the first song we'll be singing today is One Way. Y'all know it? Let's go. I lay my life down. I lay my life down at your feet. you're the only one I need. One way, 
Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. You always. Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I can live for. Good job, everybody. Uh, the next song we'll be singing together is You Are My All in All. And in this song, there's this one line that goes, Jesus, Lamb of God, what is your name? And the reason why we call him the Lamb of God, as some of you know, is because Jesus was a sacrificial lamb and the perfect lamb who uh, had to die f in order to cleanse us of our sins, right? For uh, for good, it wasn't a one thing a thing that had to be repeated. But once Jesus died, all our sins are forgiven. So let's uh, sing the song in praise, recognizing the sacrifice that God has done for us, and uh, yeah, just asking Him for uh, help during this really tough season of COVID, and asking Him for strength and declaring that He is our all in all. Okay, let's start. Sin. Mm -hmm. 
my sin, my cross, my shame Rising again, I bless your name You're my all in all When I fall down, you pick me up When I am dry, you fill my cup You're my all in all Yes, Lamb of God We conclude our worship session for today. So you guys have a really good week. Pay attention to Pastor Edgar's sermon. Don't run off in the middle of it. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next week. Okay. Later, everybody. Puggers. This week on ESE. Happy Sunday, everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. And I really hope you enjoyed uh, this week on ESC video. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to see how it relates to today's passage and sermon, as well as the Bible study worksheets. Uh, just to be able to see how much God does really care for us, uh, even though we are sinners and broken, um, how he cares for his redeemed and for his people that he re has reached out to and those who um, have responded in turn. Uh, and so uh, I really hope that encourages you and hope you had a blast with that. Our very first announcement is a big announcement. On June 19th at 12 p.m., we're going to be switching over to a live Zoom service. Instead of having these pre-recordings, we're going to have a live Zoom service. Kind of, if, if you're part of Awana, it's going to be kind of like that, but on Sunday, uh, so we're going to have praise, a pre-recorded praise, and then a live sermon with me, obviously, and then uh, Bible studies afterwards uh, in breakout rooms. Um, and this is just, you know, just to really encourage the interactiveness of the, the services, because uh, the pre-recordings, I, I know you just sit there and you just listen, and that's what you're doing right now. Um, and, they're, and they're not the best, okay? Uh, so... Uh, we're going to switch over to a live Zoom service, and we're going to see how that goes. Hopefully it goes well. And if it does, we're going to continue. And it's going to be at 12 p.m. And we'll go till roughly around 12, 12.45 p.m. And just to let you know, these services will not be recorded uh, for you know safety and security reasons. And so not recorded and won't be posted on YouTube. So it's really important that you show up at 12 p.m. for that Zoom service. And it's kind of getting used to a set time for service again. Remember those times where, you know, yeah, we had the 12 o'clock service or the 2 o'clock service, and yeah, you kind of had to be there <laughs> at those times. And if you don't, you miss it. That's it. Um, and so, you know, let's let's try to be there. 
and let's see how this works and hopefully it works well and um, yeah it just really encourages that interactiveness especially with the service and the bible studies uh, because your teachers will be there and you know if you're part of awana it's going to be like handbook time and uh, where your teachers are going to interact with you and you get to interact with your friends as well and so it's going to be great i think and i and i hope uh, and so we're going to see how that goes. All right. So that's our very first big announcement. Our second announcement is online VBS, which is going to start in August. Um, and uh, the dates I'm going to give you next week, as well as the registration process, how that's going to look like. And when registration is going to start, I hope I'll be able to have that ready for you. But yes, uh, all that information for online VBS. And just to let you know that uh, I believe there will be no charge for this as well. And it's going to be well, four days only. And and uh, yeah, so more information to come. So stay tuned. Our next announcement is just remember, uh, until we have the live Zoom service, we're going to need to continue to do the Bible studies, the worksheets. So please stay on top of those. Um, you know, you don't have to do it today. You can even do it during the week uh, as a good reminder. I think that will be very helpful as well. Uh, or do part of it today and then part of it during the week. Um, so yeah, uh, online Bible studies, please look at the description, click show more, and then go to the Bible study links and go to your appropriate Bible study grade and so forth. Our next announcement is Awana. Awana will be continuing this uh, Wednesday at uh, 7.30 p.m. So uh, if you're new, please let me know and we'll be able to get you plugged in with the Zoom information and password. Uh, and then finally, our last announcement, which is our usual announcement of looking for people that, uh, yeah, that are interested in doing the Apostles' Creed Lord's Prayer. So please let me know. It will be great to have you as part of the service and to have you bless us, uh, be a blessing to us uh, in this service. We've had a couple of children before that have done it, and they've done a remarkable job. And I might, I might put them back in again because I still have their recordings and the parents said it's okay. So, um, yeah, just to see, yeah, just to have them bless us again. But it's always good to have new people as well. So please let me know. I think that's all the announcements for now. So let's uh, start with a word of prayer. So let's put our hands together, close our eyes, bow our heads, and let's talk to God. So Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this amazing day you've given us. And thank you that... Uh, these vaccines are rolling out pretty quickly, uh, that even uh, some of the great sixes out there have already gotten their shots, which is great. Uh, and we look forward to the, day, to the day where we can come together and just worship you and uh, fellowship and, uh, and just, yeah, just be able to see each other in person and, and, um, uh, and just have that joy of coming together as a church. And so, because so many of us have not been to church for over a year now, um, and such a shame. And so, God, uh, we look forward to that day. And until that day, may you encourage us uh, with this message and, um, and this passage today. And help me to preach your word in a way that all of us will be able to understand in our hearts and minds. And just really take it with us and, um, and have it change us. And have us to just get to know you better. Our, our amazing God who cleanses us from all dirtiness, uh, from all sin. And so, God, we, we look to you and we thank you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So let's go to today's passage, which is Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. Mark chapter 5, verses 21 to 43. And it reads as this. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, My daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. 
At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding around, uh, crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came out and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was speaking, uh, some of, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. He did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him. After he put them all out, um, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. She gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. This is God's word for us today. All right. Thankfully, the past few days have been pretty sunny um, and hot. Well, at least a few times this week. Um, and I'm sure all of us or most of us had had a chance to go outside or run around and maybe even play. Uh, and when you play on a hot, humid day, you get sweaty and you start to get a little dirty. And if you keep playing in the heat and humidity, you get really sweaty and really dirty. Uh, and what feels great after having a full day like like that of just getting sweaty, dirty, and playing uh, is when you start to, when you go home and take a really nice shower and get all cleaned up. It just feels really great. And after you wash up, you just feel so refreshed and clean. Your skin is no longer sticky, but smooth. Um, and you just feel great. But imagine you couldn't take a shower. And you couldn't take a shower not only for a day, but for a week. And the dirt and sweat and smell, smell just builds up. Your hair feels greasy and skin is all sticky and you start to smell yourself. Ew. At this point, you would be getting so desperate or more desperate to take a shower. So desperate to get clean. Desperate to see clean water, soap, and shampoo. Uh, for me, it's actually just soap. I don't even need shampoo because I, I don't even have enough hair for it. Um, and so that's what happened to me when I was in a, on a mission trip many, many years ago uh, in Haiti, which is in the Caribbean, uh, borders the Dominican Republic. And uh, yeah, I was there with the team sharing the gospel, helping to build a church as well, like a church building. And so we had to do a lot of construction work in Haiti. Uh, and it was like 40 plus degree weather not including the humidity. If you add the humidity, it's like halfway to the boiling point of water. That's how hot it was there. Um, and there was no running water uh, in the building that we stayed. Uh, the, and, the, and if you need to get water to flush the toilets or wash anything, you need to go down to the river, uh, draw some out, and then haul it back to the building. And it was actually like a one or two kilometer hike or drive to be able to do that. So it was really hard to get good clean water into the building. And you know, and, and it was it was and therefore it was really hard to even just take a shower. And so for a whole week we're doing construction work, we're sharing the gospel, we're going around, and I did not take a shower for a week. Um, and I think the rest of the team did not take a shower for a week. We just got so dirty. It was like one of the roughest mission trips I've ever been on. Um, and what broke that streak, I, I think I would have gone without a shower for two weeks, but what broke that streak of not taking a shower was that a hurricane came in. 
and we were so thankful for a hurricane because the rain just came down so hard and like it felt like wherever you went was like a shower and so we a lot our whole team just changed into our bathing suits we ran out with our flip-flops and we just showered in the hurricane with the soap and the shampoo and everything and afterwards we felt so clean it was such a refreshing feeling of feeling so dirty and and feeling dirty it's just not a good feeling um, and but afterwards, getting clean, oh, amazing. It was just amazing uh, being able to feel that. And in today's passage, uh, how this all relates is that we see two people who reach out to Jesus in desperate faith to be cleaned. Uh, one to be cleaned by being healed of her bleeding, and the other, a father to see his daughter cleaned and restored from the clutches of death. Just like we would be desperate to be cleaned after being dirty for so long, these two people were desperate to be cleaned from illness and death, or the possibility of death. As Jesus again travels by boat to another area from Galilee, he arrives at a near, uh, another nearby town where we find the first desperate person coming to Jesus. Uh, his name is Jairus, and Mark tells us that he's a synagogue ruler. Uh, not a, and, and so a synagogue ruler is not a priest or a pastor, but more like a deacon, uh, someone who handles like the administrative stuff and runs the building, like the synagogue building, the church building, and organizes stuff, okay? Uh, that's what Jairus does or did. Uh, and in verse 22 and 23, we see how desperate Jairus is because he had heard that Jesus and about heard of, about Jesus and his miracles, and therefore comes to him in desperate faith and trust, and where it says he fell on, at Jesus' knees, uh, at Jesus' feet, and he was pleading and begging him to heal his dying daughter. He was desperate. And look at what Jesus does. In verse 24, it just says, so Jesus went with him. Jesus just goes with him. Doesn't say a word. Uh, and out of compassion, care, and love, he just goes. Doesn't say, hey, uh, Jairus, let me see if I can fit you into my schedule. I'm not sure. Or uh, I'm too busy today, Jairus. Uh, maybe tomorrow. Or I'm tired from the long boat ride. Or I'm hungry. Let me get a bite to eat before I visit your daughter. Uh, Jesus didn't say that. He just immediately went. Right? Because when someone... It, is desperate and puts their faith in Jesus, Jesus just comes to them. And this is the amazing love that we see right off the bat. As Jesus was heading to Jairus' house, a large crowd pressed around him because he was popular. Jesus was popular. And in verse 25, we get introduced to another, a second desperate person um, who happens to be a woman who has been bleeding for 12 years. We're not sure what illness she had, but it caused her to bleed and trickle out of her for 12 years. And according to Jewish law, if a woman was bleeding, they were considered unclean to touch. So she probably had been bullied, uh, left out. No one would hug her or high five her, or shake her hand or pat her on the back. Um, nothing, because she was considered unclean. She wouldn't be allowed to attend their services. Uh, she wouldn't be allowed to attend their gatherings. So imagine how lonely and 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 just you know just isolated she felt. Um, and she wanted to get clean so bad. She wanted to be healed so bad. And so when we see in verse 26, it says that she went to see many doctors and none could do anything to help her. It was just nothing that they could do. It was beyond the science of the time. All right. And now she hears Jesus is here. And she thinks that if she just believes in him and touches his cloak, she will be healed. So as Jesus is walking, through the crowd, she sneaks in and touches his cloak. In verse 29, it says that she was immediately healed and cleaned. Normally, if she touches you, you will be unclean. That's why people avoided her. 
by anything or but you know by anything or anyone that comes in contact with Jesus, as we can see in today's story and we'll see, it's the opposite effect. Jesus doesn't get dirty. He cleans. He cleanses. He heals. He restores. Uh, and, you know, for us, we would get defiled. We would get dirty. We would get unclean, as as the Jewish law would say. And so in verse 30, it says, At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? And you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and you can ask, Who touched me? And how would it kind of be like the disciples at this point? Uh, just imagine a crowd around you, around Jesus, and, and they're all like kind of bumping into each other. And Jesus all of a sudden, who asked, who touched my clothes? Who touched me? I would, I, if I was a disciple, I'd just be like, okay, just pick one. Pick someone from the crowd. And yeah, I'm sure they brushed by you. <laughs> all right? But Jesus kept looking, as we see in verse 32, around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, and listen to this, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. The woman thinks that Jesus is looking for her and is going around trying to find her and thinking he's going to react like, ooh, who touched me, right? Because normally if someone's not clean and they touch you, that's the reaction you would get. Ooh, who touched me? Um, and, and you're dirty. How dare you touch me? But instead, Jesus finds her, sees her. She comes out to him, and his reaction is not like that. He says, you know, and he calls her, daughter, daughter, your faith has healed you. Not the touching of the cloak, but her faith in him, her trust in him that he can heal her has cleansed her. And this is the only time in the Gospels that Jesus calls a woman daughter. And by calling her daughter, we see a side of Jesus and God that shows care and love and understanding. It's like he knows all, and I'm sure he did, all she's been through. Probably isolated from her family again and friends, left out from all the gatherings and the fun times. Um... You know, she had the fear of missing, uh, you know, people, some people have the fear of missing out. Well, guess what? She actually missed out on everything. And that's just horrible. And she didn't be close to anyone. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, she's healed. And this man makes her feel like she's family and brings his care and love to her by calling her daughter. Instead of going ill to her, he lovingly accepts her as she was reaching out in trust and faith in him. And like in this week on ESC video, uh, the way Jesus treats those who seek him is like, you know, <laughs> how that, you know, the, how the teacher was just treating that egg with care. Not, not the other example, just treating it badly, but treating the egg with care. And, um, and love. And that's how God feels for all his children that come to him wanting to be cleaned. Finally, the woman feels this immense freshness and, and is clean and, and she's not ill or bleeding. And just imagine the amazing feeling uh, that she she's able to have. And, and then also just being able to reconnect with her community and family and friends. And so we can see from this that whoever Jesus touches brings healing and restoration and cleanliness. As Jesus finally gets to Jairus' house, he is informed that the girl is dead. Not to, and, and, and they ask Jairus not to bother Jesus anymore in verse 35. But what does Jesus say and respond to Jairus? He says in verse 36, don't be afraid, just believe. And so Jairus' faith must be getting stretched here. His trust in Jesus must be getting stretched here because he's probably thinking, Jesus, can, can you heal? And I, like, I know, Jesus, you can heal and clean the sick. But do you have the power to even have clean death? Can, can you have the power or do you have the power to restore someone back to life from death. Do you love that? 
And so as Jairus gets, as Jesus gets to Jairus' house, he brings his closest disciples, uh, Peter, James, and John with him, and sees this crowd of people mourning and crying because the girl is dead. But then Jesus says in verse 39, why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. And what he meant by that is that the girl was asleep by, by, by the girl being asleep was that, yes, she was dead, but her death was not final. Meaning Jesus is going to bring her back to life, like waking someone from sleep. But the mourners responded in the most insensitive way towards Jesus and Jairus by, um, you know, actually... You know, let me just ask you a question. If you if you can look at the passage, what did the mourners do in verse 40 in response to Jesus' words? How were they very insensitive and just just wrong in their response to him? Do you know what they did? It's horrible. It's horrible that you could do this to anyone. They laughed at him. They laughed at him in the middle of someone that just died. They laughed. Who does that? Who does that to someone that who just lost a child? That's so insensitive and cruel. And you could tell these people's hearts were just there for show and far from feeling sad for Jairus and his family. But is Jesus that way? Is he? No. Jesus takes Jairus and his chosen disciples and goes into the house and takes the dead girl by the hand. He touches a dead person, and according to Leviticus 5, if you touch a dead body, you will be unclean. But does this dead body make Jesus unclean? No. Instead, um, he holds the girl's hand and says in verse 41, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, get up. And in verse 42, it says, immediately the girl stood up and began to walk around for she was 12 years old, and this they were completely astonished. He gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. Jesus calls her little girl, and that was just a way to show his deep care for her and the family. And the girl comes back to life. Jesus does not become unclean. Jesus actually cleans, makes other things that are unclean, clean and we can see this jesus answers jairus's question that was most likely in his head and that jesus does ha does have the power to clean even death and bring someone back to life and jesus proves it by telling the parents to give her something to eat dead people don't eat and only living people eat and so as she began to eat you can clearly see she's alive so what can we learn from this passage today as we kind of went through this? And I'm sure some of it's connecting with us and we're, you know, seeing what we can learn from this. There are a lot of things that we can take from this passage, actually, but it's hard to go through all of them and to remember all of them, if we, even if we did. But the main thing I want to want all of us to take is that Jesus can make you clean. He can heal and restore you. And some of you may be thinking, well, I'm not bleeding and I'm not dead. And I just took a shower. So I'm pretty clean, Pastor Edgar. I'm pretty clean. Uh, well, yes, uh, you know, uh, you know, Jesus can heal illnesses and death. And if he if he wants and sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. And we he has his reasons why he doesn't. And we can trust that Jesus knows what's best when he's doing you know, when he's healing or not, uh, and we can trust in that. But there's one thing that Jesus does and heal, uh, does clean and heal all of us, and that we're all guilty and dirty from, all right? And if you guess it, that you probably guessed it, it is our sin. And we need to see how dirty we are and have this godly guilt for our sins. 
And know that when God comes near us and allows us to approach him in prayer or reading God's word, and we ask God to clean us, we can see that God doesn't go, ew, to us, or he, uh, you know, uh, and it says, don't touch me, or you are so dirty, get out of my sight, or how dare you. And sometimes for some reason, we can see God uh, in that way, uh, looking at us with disappointment or disapproval. Um, especially after we've sinned. And so it makes us instead not want to come to him, but instead just run away from him. And that's what happens when we sin at times. We feel like just running away from him because, yes, God is so pure. But from today's story, we can see the opposite. Jesus comes to us with care and love. And when we come to him, he treats us so gently and, and as part of the family, and he wants to make us clean. We're like the fragile egg in the ESC video, and Jesus is the one that carefully watches us and takes care of us and calls us daughter or son. So when you have done something wrong, and you know if and you know it, and you feel ashamed and dirty. And you're just like, how do I make this right? And you're just so desperate to feel clean again. Jesus has the power to clean you from your sins. Because Jesus showed us, not only this story, that he, not only through this story, that he has the power over death, but also, and we can see in his death and resurrection, that and, and through the cross and the empty tomb, that Jesus has power over sin and death. And, and sin and death cannot hold him down. Therefore, Jesus has the power to forgive us of our sins and to make us clean. But we need to first see how dirty we are. Because if we don't, then we're not going to get desperate. Like Jairus or like the woman. Ah. So we need to first ask God, when we pray, show my sin, show me my sin. Some of us, we may not need help in that because we, we will be able to see our sins and our mistakes and all the things that we've done wrong. But sometimes we don't see it, especially if we get into an argument with someone, with our parents or siblings. And, you know, we just have this natural inclination or just natural gravitation or, or feeling to, to think that we're right and they're wrong. Uh, all the time, and we fail to see what we did wrong, okay? Uh, and sometimes we need to ask God, yeah, show me my sin. Help me to see my sins. Bring people, you know, and bring me to, you know, and point it out, um, and, and point it out and in, in ways where maybe you can use my brother or sister, use my mom or dad, use friends that, can, that I trust that can point out my sins, or, you know, to come read God's word, the Bible, and have that really point out your sins as well. Um, and, and that's a really good tool to do that. Uh, and, and just point it out. And then, um, and then after we ask God for that help, then to ask God that to be able to see that we have a loving Savior that uh, I, we can desperately run to for a spiritual shower to be clean from our sins forever, you know, because that's what Jesus wants. And it shows us in this story that when we come to Jesus, he treats us with, he treats people with such care and sensitivity and understanding. And he, and all he touches gets cleaned. And Jesus has that power so that when we come to Jesus with our sins and he touches us, we know we will be clean. And he will do it in a loving way, not in a way that, you know, sometimes maybe our teachers or parents may look at us with disapproval, disappointment all the time, and just be like, ugh, right? Or, you know, just annoyance. No, Jesus doesn't do that. He actually encourages us to come to him. So let's come to Jesus with our dirtiness, with our sins, and ask him to clean us today. And this is God's word for us today. And I really hope we can also share this with others and 
And if others see how broken they are, that we can point them to Jesus and let them know that Jesus can cleanse them too. All right, uh, so that's our word for today. Hope everyone has a happy Sunday. And Teacher Sharon, I believe, will be closing in a word in prayer for us. All right, bye. Hi everyone, it's Teacher Sharon. I hope you had a great past week as well as a great Sunday. And as always, let's uh, end this sermon with a word of prayer. So everyone, let's get into our prayer positions and let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for another great Sunday where we can somewhat gather um, together and um, together uh, share in our worship towards you, God, um, and as well as gain more knowledge in uh, who you are and uh, what you've written. And God, I just want to thank you so much for being a God who heals uh, and a God who comforts. And yeah, I just thank you so much for being such a powerful God. Um, a God that um, does what seems impossible but through you and um, is not impossible. God, I also want to thank you for being such uh, a loving God, a God who um, always wants to take care of us um, and is so tender and is always looking after our needs. Um, God, I thank you so much for being all of that and so much more. And as the situation is getting better, um, I pray that we all still may keep safe um, during these times and go off and have a great week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen.